everyone and welcome to The Single Parent, brought to you by Christ Our Shepherd Ministries, where we're bringing you fresh perspective and real solutions to today's single parent. My name is Jennifer Dow, and I'm so glad you're here with us today. And today I have with me Tom and Helen Wheeler. Right, Wheeler, right? Correct. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking your time out and uh, just coming and join us. And just a little bit about our guests so you guys know. Um, Tom and Helen are the founders of Changing Families Ministries, which focuses on helping single parent families and step families, um, and you help them through classes, counseling, and legal services. And then Helen, you specifically are a certified professional counselor um, and founder of Center for Families, and um, has been a single mom as well, yes. and then for nine years. Right. Okay. And then Tom, you've been a work youth worker for 29 years, founder of Parent Educator Network, and. Um, and just ministries everywhere, just speaking, and, and, and with your ministries, it's brought you to magazines, radio shows, I mean, TV interviews, just all over the place. Yes, we um, were asked to be the, uh, to organize the Single Parent Family Leadership Track for the Association of Marriage and Family Ministries. Mm -hmm. So, me, who's basically a nobody, <laughs> have to hang out with all the people who do all the books and all that stuff, so it's been a blast. That's how I feel here. I mean, just don't <laughs> the cool do. people. <laughs> Very cool. So tell me a little bit more about y'all's stories and what brought you here to, to the single parent today. Okay. Well, um, I was a single mom for nine years and made all the mistakes that everybody says you shouldn't make and learned a lot. And fortunately, I'm able to share some of the mistakes I made, some of the stuff that I've learned along the way. As a teacher, I was also a school teacher for 20 years. So between that and counseling, and um, being a single mom, I've learned a lot of things that I should have done, and, and I've gone back and apologized with my kids. And as they get to be adults, it's really neat because when I talk to them, they have some really good memories of their childhood, yeah. which is it's great the way God redeems redeems even the, the ugly stuff in their lives. Yeah. yeah. So um, we met at a church retreat. Actually, it was the last Curcio weekend I was going to do as a musician. It was kind of an emergency fill-in for someone. And I was about 30 days away from taking provisional vows to join a monastic order. I've been divorced for 25 wow. years and finally given up on everything. And um, within the first hour in the room, Helen walked in, and I knew immediately what had happened. I could almost hear the laughter from heaven. Uh, it was the only way to get me to clean up my act. So um, the rest, as they say, is history. And Shortly after we were married, uh, we got one of those magical phone calls in the middle of the night from a neighboring town's police department wondering if her son was all right because they found his car abandoned. Um, I looked at her and my questions were, you've been going through this all alone, haven't you? Yeah. Uh, and the church has been absolutely no help, have they? No. So we prayed, and I use this word advisedly, but I believe it was nothing more, nothing less than a vision of what a single parent family ministry would look like, and it didn't make any sense. So we took it to our pastor at St. Andrew's Mount Pleasant, uh, outside of Charleston, and uh, he said, you're right, it doesn't make any sense, so it's probably from God. We don't know what to do with these people anyway, so he started writing checks. These people. Then it wasn't, you know, he, you know he said, that's about 80% of our counseling time, so you'll scratch a huge itch at any rate. Yeah. And uh, they started supporting our ministry, and that was 15 years ago, and still going. I, I, hold on, I have to go back to the whole Moss thing. <laughs> that is the coolest story. That's like, a, that's movie material. Do you realize that? Yes. Okay. That's really cool. Surprise. Yeah. I mean, about to swear off. Every kind of, I mean, relationship for the rest of your life, and then in walks his beautiful bride. Well, you don't just go <laughs> in and make a vow, and, and everything's cool. There are things you have to work through so that you have some hope of being sincere about it. And uh, as someone who played in club bands and things like that, the first half of my life, through the 60s and all, I had a lot of cleanup to do. And uh, the vow is, is not celibacy, it's chastity. You don't even think of it. <laughs> The funniest part about it is I was dating someone else at the time. And so he was smitten and I was clueless. You know, we just kind of hung out. We did a few things here and there and here and there. And we were in, in church one night, probably about a year and a half after we met. And my daughter was with me. And she said, Mom, look at the way he's looking at you. 
I look, and sure enough, every time I looked up, he was just had this spent look, you know, on his face. So, anyway, so that was we met in '92, got married in '95. Wow. And uh, celebrated 15 years this year. Congratulations. That's awesome. Yes. I love that story. Yes. I'll, I'll have to hear it again later, just to feel good about it again. Yes. <laughs> so, um, so you're here. You you have your story, um, and we are talking about healing and dealing. So, how does that apply to the single parent? And um, yeah, so how does that apply to the single parent? Most people we find um, in that first couple of years, especially after the breakup of a marriage, mm-hmm. um, are in what we call the crazies. Mm-hmm. Because decision making is very difficult. In fact, quite often, uh, not only that, but any other stressful activity, you'll notice the good advice is don't make any big decisions this year. We know now the science behind it. Uh, whenever we're stressed or feel attacked, uh, stress hormones are secreted that lock down uh, the, kind of the part of the brain where we do rational thought, planning, thinking ahead. And we get launched into the limbic system, the animal brain, the rat brain is what we call it, <laughs> which is all fight or flight. It's reactionary, oh, yeah. you see. And uh, Helen, who has more letters after name than in it, likes to take it apart even further. Anger is a very complex thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, we just think of it as getting mad. It's a lot more than that. Yeah. But not only that, but people, yeah, I taught school. Yeah. And I can remember little kids playing school and playing house and things like that. And we grow up with this heavily ever after attitude. Yeah. We're going to meet our, our wonderful Prince Charming or Princess Charming. And we're going to get married. We're going to have 2.3 kids. We'll have a minivan in the driveway, a white picket fence, and we'll live happily ever after. So no matter how people get to the place of being a single parent, whether it's um, divorce or whether some, whether they had children without being married, or whether their spouse died, there's always some some hurt that happens with that, um, some anger that comes with it, unfulfilled expectations. One of the biggest causes of anger, and that's definitely where they are. So you get the the healing aspect, no matter how it, how they got to that place. They're hurt, and they're frustrated, and they're upset, and they're confused, and they don't know how they got there. And the dealing, quite frankly, is um, God intended us to be married, and for kids to be raised by two parents. Mm-hmm. And that's a big enough job. But when you're doing it by yourself, there's so much you have to deal with. I had a, I had a boy and a girl. I couldn't be a dad to my son. I really couldn't. So there were some things that you just have to deal with because you have to do it. Mm-hmm. And figuring out how to get everybody everywhere. And, and you know, I was teaching school, so I had the same hours that they did. Fortunately, they were a little bit older. They were um, in elementary and middle school when, when we first uh, became a became single, single parent family. So, um, but I can't imagine, I really can't imagine how a parent, a single mom, deals with with having infants and toddlers at home. So no matter how you look at it, it's, it's not the way it was supposed to be. And that's where we tried. We've had a, uh, a support group that we've done since 1996. And we try and have people look at it as an extended family. And yeah. you know, under, you know, Christ is the head, and we're an extended family. And we see people who have had relationships, you know, not, not anything We've only had one couple that met and married through our ministry. All the rest are, they've been great friends and, and girlfriends and they help each other with, with running errands and taking care of their kids and stuff like that. So it's really been exciting to see the way God has knit together this, this extended family. That's really cool. Yeah, the, the healing aspect is something we quite often give very short shrift to. Um, even the church falls into the trap of, well, gee whiz, Single parenting is so hard. Uh, let's see if we can fix it. Well, how do you fix single? Let's get them married to somebody who's a Christian guy this time and everything will be fine. And we have a hideous divorce rate among those folks. It's better than 60% within two years. This cannot be God's plan. So in the group we've had, uh, first of all, we don't allow dating in there among the group, and, and it's a co-ed group. Um, of those who have remarried, including a few who snuck around their rules, as it were. We've only had uh, one divorce in the almost 15 years, and that was very recent. Um, so something is going on here when we treat it not as a singles ministry, but as a family ministry. That's what they are. 